In order to do this color wheel, you're going to be starting with the primary colors. I've got my blue, red, yellow, and you'll also need white for later on when we do our skin tones. On your tables, there's going to be references, a color wheel for you to actually compare your colors to. Um, and you'll also have your brushes. By the sinks, you're going to want to grab yourself a water cup and always have paper towels by you because the paper towels are extremely important in order to dab off any excess water. You don't want it to turn into watercolor being too much. When using paint, you gotta pick a brush that's going to make you comfortable. Um, I love the flat end brushes, but other people do enjoy the rounds. It all depends on what you're painting. As I go in to paint, my first color, which happens to be yellow, I am coating it down. Now you're going to see that as I paint, I'm kind of spreading it evenly. I'm very comfortable with painting towards my body for some reason, um, and I just enjoy that and I have a lot of control. One of the other things you might notice is my grip. My grip is like I'm holding a pencil. A lot of people I see start to paint and their their grip is way at the bottom of the paint and they're very loose. That's not gonna give you very much control. As I go to mix my next um, hue, I'm gonna be making a yellow, red, yellow orange. I'll mix this in. Notice I'm always mixing the darker color into the lighter color. You're gonna thoroughly mix it. I do not want you mixing on the paper. I want you to mix it into your palette. These are your palettes. You're gonna be taking care of these. So you wanna make sure you have fresh paints, thoroughly mix, check it. It looks pretty on point and then I'm gonna paint it. Sometimes you get tons of paint on these after mixing. You may wanna take a little of this excess off to give yourself a little more finer point. And I'm gonna come back, neatly paint this in. The point of this project and this exercise is for you to learn how to mix your colors appropriately and to paint within here. You will be deducted points if you do not stay within the lines. Taking a little more red, I'm going to mix it in here to get a secondary color, orange. Mixing it thoroughly. As you notice, I'm going from the lighter hue to the darker hue, it just makes more sense. It's not as wasteful. Check it. I don't want it to be the exact same color I just did. This looks pretty good as I mix it and I'm gonna keep going around. Doing the bottom half of this, be careful. I know your instinct might be to paint as you go, but you don't want to drag your hand through wet paint or anything. So I did do mine afterwards, making sure to identify which ones are the primary colors, which ones are the secondary colors, warm to cool colors, as you can see. Um, 
and still painting within the edges. This is another way to practice. Complementary colors, as a reminder, our colors are crossed from each other on the color wheel. Red and green, blue, blue and orange, and then yellow and violet. I've already done those. I would take then my violet and paint this in. Oh, I need a little more red in there. When doing this color wheel, make sure to write your name in pen or marker so you can see it, because obviously everyone's looks the same. I'm noticing my brush, and you can probably see it too, is extremely separated. This makes it very hard to paint straight. I would encourage you not to paint with a brush that is going to have this much texture to it. We will just switch it out for a different brush because it's very hard to get a good straight line with it. As I said, make sure, pen, getting your name in here. Last but not least, we have our skin tones. Obviously, skin tones vary from one individual to the next. Um, what I usually always start off with is complementary colors. When you mix complementary colors together, all these colors, when you mix them in the palette, you're going to get a neutral color. I find the best skin tone um, to mix together is the orange and blue set, but I even take it one step farther and make sure I have a reddish orange. I take a tiny, tiny bit of blue, I mean, super tiny, and start mixing it in here. And I gradually start getting a brown flesh tone. A little bit more. If your hue starts to turn green, that means you put too much blue into it and you need more red orange in there to counterbalance that. Right now, this is a skin tone, but you can always vary it. Now, I'm just gonna show you a wide variety of skin tones. You can see that's one. But now, if you want to lighten it up, you can take your white and mix this into here. As I said, you can vary your skin tones. It doesn't all have to be just one version. And here's a very light flesh, as you can see. Some people also have a little more red in their you can add a little bit of red in there to make it pinkish. Each of these are correct. You only have to give me one flesh tone. I just wanted to show you that you can variate this. When it's said and done, it has to dry before you turn it into the bin 